Hello, hello everybody. It is Lauren here of Theory of Lauren and today I wanted to do a little bit of a different video for me, but one that I have gotten requested for a few times now and that is to talk about what I keep inside my pen pouches and I'm also going to talk a little bit about like how I plan on the go and what kinds of things I bring with me and things like that. So if you're interested, I hope you stick around and yes so before we get started i would just like to take a couple minutes and say thank you to ana luisa for partnering with me on today's video i'm going to pass you over to future me so she can tell you a little bit about ana luisa and their amazing pieces thank you so much to ana luisa for partnering with me on today's video now if you know me you will know that i have never been a big jewelry wearer only because i've always thought that it was too expensive and out of reach for me and my budget then i found ana luisa if you are looking for high quality sustainable jewelry that doesn't break the bank look no further than ana luisa this online jewelry brand offers a stunning range of necklaces earrings rings and bracelets designed with care and crafted from recycled materials from timeless classics to modern pieces there's something for every style and best of all, they are all at an affordable price point. As a graduate student on a tight budget, I love that their pieces start at just $39, allowing me to invest in timeless jewelry without stretching my budget. To me, what sets Ana Luisa apart is their commitment to sustainability. They're a carbon neutral company, which means they prioritize the planet without compromising on quality. Each piece is rigorously tested to ensure it's long-lasting, tarnish-resistant, and made to be cherished for years to come. Knowing that the jewelry I'm wearing has been crafted with care makes each piece even more special. All of Ana Luisa's designs are unique and will make you feel empowered, elegant, and at your finest. I find that adding one or two pieces to my outfit makes me feel confident and put together. Their jewelry effortlessly elevates any look, whether I'm in the classroom teaching my students or headed to the library and looking to add a little sophistication to my outfit. The quality and craftsmanship shine through, making each piece not just an accessory, but a statement of self-expression and refined taste. Another great thing about Ana Luisa is how easy it is to exchange pieces with their free shipping and exchanges policy. Plus, every product comes with a two-year warranty, so you're set for the longevity of your jewelry. As someone who lives in Canada, I especially appreciate their fast and reasonable shipping rates. I'm leaving a link in the description box of this video for you to explore Ana Luisa and get 20% off your order with my discount code. So go ahead and elevate your everyday style with Ana Luisa. Now let's go ahead and get back into the video. Okay, so to start off, I don't bring this big Delphonics pouch that has stuff falling out of it. I don't bring this with me on a daily basis. Usually when I'm working outside of the house, which is usually at school, at my office at school or at the library, I bring these two pen pouches with me. This one is all of my writing implements and this one's also writing implements but it's fountain pens so let's go ahead and talk about this one first this is a fountain pen pouch from the coffee monsters co and i got it during the birthday sale if you know me or if you've been around here for a while you know yellow is somewhat of a challenging color for me but i thought what better way to be challenging myself to touch yellow then with a really adorable pencil case by one of my favorite artists so here we are and inside i just have my three twisby fountain pens these are all twisby ecos in extra fine and i personally just love how they all go together so well with the rose gold like they all match and it's just like very satisfying to me so i keep those in here for when I want to use my fountain pens and in this pouch back here I just have some page flags and then my two pilot metropolitan fountain pens these are also in extra fine and I find that these are nibs are like perfect for me because my writing is really small I like a really 
a uh, tiny needle tip and I think these are so perfect. The Twisbees, like I love writing with them, but they still are a little bit like bold or wide for me, but yes. And this one in gold was gifted to me by my friend Maria at A Papery Life. And this black one was gifted to me by my friend Ellie of Ellie's Corner. So I'm so lucky to have them. And yeah, this is basically my fountain pen collection in one little pouch. But I bring this to school with me on the daily because I like taking a lot of my notes in my research notebook with fountain pens. I just find it makes it a more pleasurable note-taking experience. But I don't exclusively use fountain pens. Uh, and that is why or where I should say, this pen pouch comes in. This is another pen pouch from the Coffee Monsters Co. I believe the color was called Obsidian. And if you look really closely, you will notice that I have spilled coffee on it, which I'm very annoyed about, but also is just what happens when you are me and always have coffee and are always kind of on the go somewhere. So yes, I also have this little charm. It came on a paper clip from the Coffee Monsters Co, but I just took it off and put it on here because I thought it was really cute. So let's just take everything all out and I can tell you about it. So this is very important in my pencil case. It's my ruler. I'm using one from the Coffee Monsters Co. again, and it's very cute. It has some stencil and engravings, but I pretty much just use it um, as a ruler for drawing any kind of lines, or sometimes even when I'm reading and underlining in the book that I'm reading, I will pull this out. So this is very useful. I use it like all the time and I won't leave the house without it. This is my Zig Clean Color Dot Pen, and I have it in the black color. That's pretty much the only color of these dot pens that I use, is the black one. I find it's really good for obviously making like bullets and dots and things in my journal, kind of when I don't want to make a bulleted list with stickers, just to use this is really easy. Then I have the Stedler Permanent Lumo Color Pen. This is permanent, as it says, um, but I use it to write on page flags and transparent sticky notes. It's really, it doesn't like rub off or anything after a while, like it's very permanent, which is good because that's what it says on it. But um, yeah, and I got this at the bookstore at my university, but you can probably find it on Amazon or something. I then have a Zebra Sarasa Vintage. I don't know what color this is, but it comes from one of the vintage packs. And I just keep this lone <laughs> Zebra Sarasa in my pen case because when I'm taking notes on books, I like to write all of my notes in black pen, but I like to write my own thoughts as they come up in blue so that I can tell between the two ink colors what's my own versus what is being copied from a book, if that makes sense. So that's why I have this in here. Uh, you will notice I have three Tabo Furunosuke pens in the hard tip. I love these for lettering. It's like my go-to lettering pen. I like the hard tip because it's really precise to work with. But the reason why I have three <laughs> is because I keep two that I have wrapped tape around the tops just to mark that they're older so the tips are a little bit frayed and kind of not as good for lettering when the tips get frayed but they're still really good for coloring in so I keep them around because they have lots of juice there's lots of um, juice left to color things in um, but I don't use these so much for lettering and I have this new one without the tape at the top that is newer and still good for lettering. The reason why I keep these around and what I mean by coloring is that I use the Tombow Fudenosuke to color in all of the black bars that I write on to then write on in white. Let me see if I have an example. Okay, so for instance here, when I do the black bar with the white text, I do this a lot 
just because I find it's a good way to like divide things but I really think the big important part with this is what black pen you use because that's going to depend on how potent the whiteness is going to turn out. So I found it works best with Tombow Fudenosuke and I always get a good result when I then go and write on it with a white pen. Um, I've tried with other types of black markers and it hasn't worked out so well so that's why I really stand by using this specific pen. Next are my pencils. These are Pilot Twist Erase GT in 0.5 lead and I also got these at the bookstore at my university but I don't know if, where else you could get them but they're just like a basic mechanical pencil. I keep these because when I'm reading in books I prefer to do all of my annotations on the book pages in pencil and to go along with that I just carry a small container of 0.5 lead refills just in case I need to refill my um, pencils. These are obviously zebra mild liners. I tend to just keep a random selection of colors in my pencil case at any one time. If there's a week that I'm using a specific color in my pages, like for a theme or something, I'll switch one of these out for that color. But I tend to just keep a random assortment in my pen case and change them out when I feel like it. These are the Le Pen technical drawing pens and they are essentially just fine liners. Okay, sorry, I don't know how much of that you heard because there's currently some kind of air show going on outside my apartment, obviously like in the sky, and they're making so much noise when they fly over, so I hope that wasn't too disruptive. But anyways, these are fine liners that I prefer I don't know why, but I started using these once like five years ago. I just found a random one at a stationery store near my parents' house in Ottawa. And since then I've really stuck to them because I find that their fine liner tip is really durable and long lasting. So it holds up really well for whatever you're using. I also find I'm like a bit heavy handed when I write and the tips really hold up even in spite of my heavy handedness. So I really like these. And I do believe you can get these on jet pens, but the last time I looked, they were out of stock. Then I have a selection of Muji pens. I have them all in 0 0.38, which is my preferred, well, my preferred pen size or like nib size is 0.3, but this is the smallest that the Muji ones come in. And I hadn't used them for a long time and then all of a sudden I was reminded that I had like a bunch of Muji pens. That's the air show. Can you hear it? Oh, literally so annoying. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I remembered I had a whole bunch of these Muji pens and I was writing with them the other day and I was actually like, oh my gosh, I kind of forgot how nice these pens write. They're like nothing fancy, but it just feels really smooth. So I've been enjoying kind of dappling back with these. And then these are again, just more Muji pens in blue and red. I don't know why I have the blue one on me. I honestly have no idea, but the red one is what I use for marking um, student assignments. And last but not least, I have <laughs> my beloved Pentel Energel Klenas. This is my most used pen and the one I reach for the most because it is a 0.3 needle tip and I find it just works so well with my tiny writing and I never get let down by this pen. Um, you will notice these both say 0.4 at the top, but no matter what, when I get a Klenna, I always just unscrew it and take out the refill that it came with and put a 0.3 refill back in. And yeah. So those are the two pen cases that I bring with me most often. I do want to talk a little bit about this 
big honking case, uh, my Delphonics pouch. So this is something that I bring with me when I am traveling and I know I'm going to have time to do journaling. For instance, when I go back to like Ottawa to visit my parents or to visit family, I'll bring this because I know I'm going to have downtime and like time to journal versus if I'm going on a trip for like a conference or something, I generally won't have that much time to journal so I won't bother bringing it. But nonetheless, like just keeping it all here together in one pouch, it's like basically ready for me to grab and go at any time. So as I said, this is a Delphonics pouch. I actually don't know what size this is because I'm not too familiar with Delphonics pouches. I just got this in person from the Toronto Stationery Show when I went last or earlier this year, I think. And so on it, I have these two magnetic backed pins. This They're both from Planner Monkey Co. But this one is when they she did a collab with Paper Bits Co., which are my two favorite Canadian shops. And then I also have this one from Planner Monkey Co., which is an espresso machine. And it says, reminder, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I just love that so much. So in this big guy here, <laughs> I guess we'll just start by over here. So I just have three different Pentel Energel Clanas, as I just said. It's my most used pen, so I have a lot, and I like to keep many on hand so that I have one whenever I need it, basically. Um, and sometimes I like to change up the color, so I have a little assortment here. I also have some refills. These are the Energel Clana Needlepoint refills, so I keep those tucked in here as well. In this front pocket, I have a whiteout. I love this whiteout so much. It's the Tombow refillable correction tape. It works really well on the Hobonichi Cousin paper, I find, and the Freely Noted paper. Um, and then the other thing that I have is just a Tombow adhesive that I keep for any of my like vision boards or like sticking in ephemera or whatever into your daily pages. That works pretty well. In this pouch, I have two little clear pockets full of transparent stickers. This one is full of custom, or not all custom scripts, but some of them are custom scripts, but just in general, like script stickers. And this one is full of icons. And all of these stickers, the scripts and the icons, are from Planner Monkey Co. She has a great variety of scripts and of icons to choose from, so there's literally something for everything. Um, I have a discount for Planner Monkey Co. and I will put that down below in the description box, but it's just Lauren15. Then in this pocket here, I just have some assorted sticky notes. I often just quickly jot things down on sticky notes, so it's good to keep them on hand. These two are from the Coffee Monsters Co. And this really simple kind of neutral design, which is so pretty, is from According to Ally. So I just keep those tucked in here. In this pocket, I don't have anything. Um, and then flipping over to this side. In this pocket here, I have some transparent page tabs. I just use these to tab off random pages in my planner or notebook that I want to mark as important. So I literally just flag them with page flags. <laughs> Groundbreaking, I know. And then in this pocket here, I have a washi swatch card that doesn't have anything on it, but good to keep on hand. And I have this little notepad from the Coffee Monsters Co. It's craft paper and it's not like an adhesive notepad, but comes in handy nonetheless. In this pocket here, I just have like a bunch of sticker sheets that don't really have a home anywhere else. Um, I have a few sheets from Nicole Josephine. I have some Emoti head samplers from the Coffee Monsters Co. I have this <laughs> sticker of brains from paper bits co i don't know why that's in this pocket because i have another spot for it but it's a sticker that i reach for a lot 
so that's probably why it just ended up here um i think it's so cute this one the crying brain is my favorite <laughs> i'm gonna keep that aside and put it in its proper spot i have this sheet of clear months from virgo and paper i'm actually holding on to this for a future notebook setup then i just have these sticker flakes that i picked up at wonder pens and this sheet of like bread bear stickers that my friend maria gave to me and then i have some clear date stickers from planner monkey co in the matte paper um these two are from smart and co which is a store that i discovered at the toronto stationery show and then these two i love so much <laughs> they're from see amy draw and they're like survival quotes they're so they come in so handy for daily pages when like i didn't do a lot <laughs> um, i find that these are really perfect and then I also just keep in here two jumbo samplers from Planner Monkey Co. Because again, there's like a lot of random stickers on here that come in handy when I'm just on the go and need to fill up some space. So I keep those back here as well. Moving inside. In this inner pocket, these are the cartridge refills that I keep for the Pilot Metropolitan pens that I showed earlier. They're just the black um, ink cartridges and I only recently learned that you can save the cartridges when they're empty and refill them with other inks. So that's kind of cool. Thank you to Ava for pointing that out to me. <laughs> and in this pocket, I have some washi. I have a washi card of just like a few kind of black and white washies that come in handy and I also have a roll of this line art floral washi from Paper Bits Co. This is like my most used washi tape so I keep it on hand basically at all times. Um, on this side I have another clear pouch and I just have various um vinyl stickers in here these are ones that i'm kind of saving for another future planner setup as well i just started collecting them all in here and then in this last pocket here i have my exacto knife thing that i use to cut stickers and washi sometimes and i also have these like very beautiful tiny and elegant stickers that i got from a giveaway prize from according to ali actually so those are both really handy to keep around then in this like big section here i have this pencil board from hobonichi that i don't actually use as a pencil board because I don't like using pencil boards that much. I actually enjoy like the ridging that goes on the page after you write on it. I think it feels really cool. But I keep this in here for if I do need to do any cutting with this X-Acto knife, I'll put this underneath to like protect whatever surface I'm working on. So that's kind of why that's still in here. Then I have these two folders. They're, I would say like B6 size folders. This one is from Planner Monkey Co. And this one is from the Coffee Monsters Co. In this folder here, I just keep a variety of stickers from different shops, but ones that I use a lot. So there's like some Coffee Monsters Co. stickers here, some Paper Bits Co. stickers. And then back here I have Salon Creative and Back here I have some washi circle dots from Paper Bits Co. So I just keep a little selection of my sticker collection in here. Um, that way when I'm again like out of the house or out of town and visiting family, I will more than likely find what I need in this small like scaled down version of my sticker collection in here. Oh actually, this is why I kept this sticker sheet out because this is a much better spot for it. So there we go. Perfect. This is a similar thing. This is a um, folder from Coffee Monsters Co. As I said, it was from one of the subscriptions from last year, I believe. And in here, I keep the majority of my tiny icons, which I use all the time, as you can see by the empty sheets. 
so yes all my tiny icons go in here and then just some of my other kind of not like specialty but the ones that are on like different kinds of paper i keep those in here and again just some washi sticker samplers in here as well so these are mostly functional stickers in here then i have these two pockets which are also from the coffee monsters co this is the b6 size and this is the a6 size i guess this is from the most recent birthday sale and then this one was from a release before that i don't have anything in this one yet because i just got it and i'm not sure what i want to put in there yet but i figure it is a very good spot to just live in here which is why I've put it there and then in this one I just have all of my duplicate tiny icon sheets that are new sheets or like ones that I have duplicates of essentially I don't know how else to explain that but like all the extra ones just go in here and then lastly I have these two reusable sticker books these are both from Planner Monkey Co and I absolutely love this coffee stain pattern that she has so i have like the folder and the two sticker books to all match i just think it's so nice but essentially again these are just smaller scaled down selections from my sticker collection in here i have mostly like functional stickers and leftovers from kits like all the monthly kits and stuff. I have some icons as well, but for the most part, it's like monthly kit leftovers. I don't have to like flip through all of this, but you get the point. And then in this one, I have just like a selection of tiny icons. Yeah. So yeah, that pretty much does it for this pouch. So that's a little bit about my various pen pouches and what I bring with me when. I hope that this was helpful to anyone. And yeah, if you have any questions, as always, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And thank you again to Ana Luisa for partnering with me on today's video. Make sure to check out link in my description box so you can grab a few pieces for yourself as well and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!